another mystery to me is the high megapixel count. Why would you need that for landscape pictures? Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. And today I'm gonna shoot some <laughs> birds. I'm gonna shoot some landscapes here at Benchakiti Forest Park in Bangkok, Thailand. And for that, I'm gonna use my big and heavy full frame camera because that's what you're supposed to use for landscapes, right? Let me show you my big and heavy full frame camera. Where is it? Where is it? It's so uh, big and heavy that I can't find it in my back. Yes, here it is, the Sony A7 Mark IV and the Sony 40mm f2.5 G lens. There are so many rules and beliefs in photography that it's overwhelming like for example that you need a full frame camera you need a lot of megapixels and you need a wide angle for landscape photography for example and to be honest i really don't know where all those come from uh, there certainly is a place for a wide angle and uh, maybe a full frame camera but my opinion is that uh, you can shoot landscapes with any camera. You really don't need a full frame camera. And I don't really understand why you would need a wide angle. I'm not really a landscape shooter, but if I had to shoot landscapes or if I want to shoot like today, I'd much rather use something like a 40 millimeter, 50 millimeter or a short telephoto like 70, 85, 90, 100 millimeter for landscapes. Maybe I just don't know how to use wide angle, but anyway, I, I end up with lots of useless uh, foreground in my pictures that doesn't do anything for, for the picture or for the, for the content or for the composition. I think it's so much easier to use a short telephoto or a standard lens for landscapes, especially if you are a beginner uh, or not so used to landscape photography. It's so much easier to, to control the different layers in the picture and you will not end up with lots of useless foreground in your pictures. Another mystery to me is the high megapixel count. Why would you need that for landscape pictures unless you had a certain specific purpose in mind, certain specific end use in mind? I've seen many awesome lands landscape photos shot on a phone camera. Maybe that imaginary need for high megapixel count comes from the past because in the past many great landscape photographers like Ansel Adams for example they used large negative sizes like 8 by 10 and that had the highest resolution or resolving power back in the day but photography was so different back in the day they made contact prints of those uh, big negatives and uh, the resolving power of uh, film back in the day was not that great so you had to use bigger than 35 millimeter pretty much for landscapes if you wanted some some uh, like a small small detail or any kind of detail in your pictures and uh, and uh, the biggest possible tonal range in your pictures but today things are so different and i think we don't need uh, high megapixels necessarily for landscapes today So why am I using this full frame camera today? First of all, I just wanted to use it because I have it and most of the time I'm using my Ricoh GR3 and 3X and today I just wanted to use another camera and also in this bright daylight 
and shooting landscapes, I want my compositions to be at least a little bit uh, like more accurate or precise. So I wanted the viewfinder and this camera happens to be the only camera with a, a, a viewfinder that I have right now. And today I'm very traditional. I'm shooting black and white landscapes and I'm gonna do it in the old school way. With a mirrorless camera, I could turn on the monochrome or black and white mode and I could see my preview in the viewfinder or on the screen in black and white or grayscale. But I'm gonna leave my camera in color mode and I'm just, I just want to see if I still have it because back in the day when we had black and white film, we saw everything in color, of course, and we just had to sort of uh, be able to see the scene in grayscale and to be able to evaluate how it would look in black and white and I'm, I'm gonna see if I can still do it. Of course, this is not comparable to film photography because I'm shooting raw and I'm converting my pictures to grayscale in post and I can apply digital color filters and all that in post. But still, uh, if the scene doesn't look good in black and white, if my evaluation is somehow wrong, then it won't look good in post either after my post processing. But I'm not trying to explain or say that this is the same thing as shooting film but i'm just i just want to try something a little bit more traditional today today i'm gonna use aperture priority i'm gonna lock my iso to 100 get the maximum sharpness and uh, dynamic range and I'm gonna keep my lens mostly in uh, uh, 5.6 or 11 or in that range to get maximum sharpness from corner to corner but I don't rule out occasional f2.5 for for some uh, shallow depth of field shots if something like that uh, happens to be there in front of me something that uh, requires shallow depth of field Like I said, I'm shooting raw as always and in post I'll probably apply orange uh, or red filter, digital filter to my pictures to make them uh, look a little bit better because orange or red usually works really well for landscapes, especially if you have blue sky in your picture, red or orange filter makes that blue sky really deep and dark and that can look really delicious. Sometimes a green filter might be in order if you like to make the green leaves or green stuff look a little bit lighter or brighter. As you probably know, a filter, whether it's a digital filter, filter or a physical color filter for black and white photography, it always makes its own color look lighter and its opposite color look darker. So red filter makes a blue sky look darker. all pretty much agree that heavy-handed image manipulation is not good but somehow black and white photography seems to be an exception everyone seems to like black and white photography more or less and no one thinks it's any kind of manipulation but it's pretty radical if you remove all the colors from the picture if that is not heavy manipulation then what is but I think we tolerate black and white pictures, we don't even think it's manipulation because we're so used to uh, black and white pictures and black and white photography was dominating the first decades of uh, photography. 
there were some early color photography experiments, but those early color processes were really, really difficult to execute and really difficult to repeat, and they required so much more skills and uh, chemical understanding than black and white photography. Black and white photography is a bit of a controversial topic among many digital photographers. Photographers who never experienced film or shot black and white film. But I think everyone should definitely try an ex experiment with the black and white photography because it's so easy with digital cameras and uh, it can teach you a lot about colors in the scene. And it can also teach you that colors are not necessary in many pictures. Sometimes you see a, a picture in front of you or a scene and you think that, okay, there, is, there are so many beautiful colors, but once you take a black and white picture of the scene, you realize that those colors were not necessary after all. It can even look better in grayscale or black and white. Black and white is also a great way to get rid of some distracting color elements in your picture. And it's also a great way to simplify things. And black and white is all about light and shadow forms and shapes in the picture and not so much about color. And that's why I think it's a great way to become a better photographer and learn more about uh, composition and uh, light and shadow and shapes and all that. And I definitely recommend you to try black and white because you can't lose anything, especially if you shoot raw, you can always convert your picture black back to color or back to black and white, however you want it. But I think if you start shooting black and white, it's a good idea to turn the camera into black and white mode and think uh, like uh, in the grayscale when you shoot, because I think uh, that's how you learn more and uh, you end up with better results. There you have it, some of my thoughts on the mandatory full frame for landscapes and some thoughts on black and white photography. I think that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this little photo walk, a POV video here in Benchakiti Forest Park, Bangkok, Thailand. Thank you so much. And if you found this video useful, entertaining or thought provoking, please consider buying me a cup of coffee. There's a link down below if you don't live in Finland. Thanks so much for walking with me and watching and I'll see you in the next one.